Hey guys. One of the things that is going to be critical to us as we get into inference procedures and statistics is understanding um, what is known as the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem is a theorem in statistics that is critical um, to our being able to generalize information that we get from a sample to make predictions about a population. Without the central limit theorem, we would really not be able to do any of that. We wouldn't be able to just take a sa sample and then make predictions or estimates based on a population um, because we wouldn't, we wouldn't really be able to go anywhere unless we knew what the distribution of the population looked like. So I'm going to start with a very straightforward example of um, the height of young women. We've seen these examples before when we were studying the normal curve. But the height of young women varies approximately according to the normal distribution. It has a mean of 64 and a half inches and a standard deviation of 2 and a half inches. So we're going to look at something that we already know to be normal. So um, if I, I have a little applet that's going to actually show us Actually, let me go ahead and reset it. And if I set up my normal distribution so that it has a mean of 64 and a half and a standard deviation of two and a half, I'm setting my min and max um, from 50 to 80 inches. So now that I have that distribution, this is what the population would look like. It's um, and this is just an idealized version. I haven't actually gone out and interviewed all of the young women in the country to figure out how tall they are. This would just be what the normal distribution would look like. Um, so this is a model for what the height of women would be. So this is a normal distribution that has a mean of 64 and a half and a standard deviation of two and a half. And what you can see, there's a red line that goes straight through the center. That is, the red line actually illustrates the mean for my distribution, which is 64 and a half. Mm -hmm. So suppose that I were to um, draw two women randomly from this population and ask them their height and take an average. So if I were to draw two women at a time, and let's say I were to do this a hundred times. So I'm going to simulate a sampling distribution of drawing two women at a time, determining their average height, and then doing this a hundred times. And so what you can see um, is the simulation in blue, which is showing you if I were to, again, draw two women at a time, take their average height, and then plot those, those, those mean heights, so my x bars. So this is the sampling distribution of x bar that you are seeing. Notice that with the blue histogram, um, it still is centered around that same red line. So if I'm looking at a sampling distribution, and this time it's, it's x bar, so I'm looking at all of the means of these samples and how they're distributed how they're distributed, they still have the same mean. Um, what you should also notice is that the distribution is still bell-shaped and symmetric, so we can say that it's approximately normal. The only difference is, though, is that it's not spread out as far, so the standard deviation is a little bit smaller, since instead of looking at a sample of one, I'm actually looking at a, a sample of size two, and so we can see that the standard deviation is decreasing a little. Well, suppose instead, let me reset this, instead of drawing a sample of size 2, let's see what would happen if I were to choose five women at a time. So now I'm just taking a random sample of five women from the population, determining their average height, again, that's going to be x bar, and I would do this 100 times. So I'm looking at 100 different groups of five women. And if I were to do a simulation, and again, I'm not actually running around picking out these women, this is just a simulation. Notice again, the blue histogram that appears, this is my sampling distribution of x bar, it's still centered around the same mean, and I think you can tell, again, it's still going to be bell-shaped and symmetric, so we can say that it's approximately normal, but again, just like we saw with the sample size of 2, my standard deviation is even a little bit smaller. Okay, so instead of looking at a sample of size 5, let's start over again. Let's actually increase our sample to size 10 and see what happens. And again, the blue histogram that appears, this is basically me taking samples of size 10, so I'm interviewing 10 women at a time, and I'm finding their average height, again that's x bar, and I'm looking at all of my x bars if I were to do 100 samples of 10. Now this is the distribution of x bar. It is still centered around 64 and a half. That's that red line in the center. It's still bell-shaped bell and symmetric. The only difference is as my sample size has increased, my standard deviation has decreased. Okay, and one more. Let's go ahead and look at a sample of size 30. If I were to reset it, 
And notice again, our standard deviation is even smaller. But our distribution is still bell-shaped and symmetric, and my mean is still 64 and a half. Okay. So it may make sense to you, though, that if we start off with a normal distribution, then when we start sampling from it, all of our sampling distributions will also be normal. That may seem like common sense to you. So why don't we look at a distribution that's not normal? So for example, let's take a look at a uniform distribution. So here's a, norm, here's a uniform distribution where the values of x are distributed evenly um, from negative 3 to positive 3. So suppose now, again, I'm just going to start off with n equals 2. So I'm going to look at samples of size 2. I'm going to find the average, and then I'm going to do this 100 times. And look what happens. Now, my original distribution was very clearly not normal. But as you can see, the sampling distribution of x bar is starting to look somewhat bell-shaped. It still is relatively flat, but I think you can see pretty clearly that it's becoming bell-shaped. Okay, so let's go ahead and do another um, sampling distribution. This time I'm going to set my sample size to be 5. So now I'm looking at choosing a sample randomly of size 5 from this uniform distribution. Let me reset everything and start it. And again, as you can imagine, my standard deviation is shrinking. And my distribution no longer looks uniform. Now I think you can very clearly see that it's becoming bell-shaped. Notice again that the center of the distribution is still, in this case it would be at zero since it's uniformly spread between negative 3 and 3. And I think you can very clearly see that it's a bell-shaped symmetric distribution. And if we reset this and look at samples of size 10, again, the mean is still centered at zero, the standard deviation is even smaller, my distribution is clearly no longer uniform. The sampling distribution for x bar is becoming more and more normal. And let's do one more. This time we'll do sets of 30, or samples of size 30. And we get the same result. So even though my original population was clearly not normal, it was a uniform distribution, as I started taking samples and increasing the sample size, the sampling distribution for the mean became closer and closer and closer to a normal distribution with the same mean as the population, but with a standard deviation that is smaller. Okay, so again, both of the original populations that we looked at seemed to be kind of like, they were definitely symmetric distributions, so again, it may seem obvious that if you're taking a symmetric distribution and you're doing samples from that distribution, that the distribution would still be um, symmetric. And in fact, you might even um, might make sense that it's going to be um, bell-shaped as well. So what if, though, our original population, so our population distribution is skewed? So here we are looking at a distribution that is clearly skewed to the left. Um, the red um, vertical line here indicates the mean of the population. So um, I've just come up with a distribution that's skewed. Um, the mean in this case is 0.8. I'm sorry, no, that's not true. Um, the the uh, proportion in this case would be 0.8. So if I were to start sampling, and again, I'm going to start with something small like, point, or like 2. So if I take um, two individuals from this population that is clearly skewed, find the average, and plot plot that um, value and do that a hundred times, so I'm looking at a hundred groups of two, this is what I'm going to start to see. And it's still very slightly skewed, but again, as I've increased the sample from one to two, my standard deviation is slightly smaller, and it's not quite as skewed as it was. Let's do this again with a sample of size 5. Again, it's still centered on that red line. And I think you can see that it's no longer um, as clearly skewed as it was before. Here we do with a sample of size 10.
And finally, a sample of size 30. So we're looking at 30 individuals at a time from the skewed population. And we're calculating the average of each group of 30, and we're doing this 100 times. And very clearly, I think you can see that the sampling distribution of x bar becomes a normal distribution with a mean that is equivalent to the mean of the original population and a standard deviation that is smaller. OK, here's an example of a distribution that's skewed to the right. And here's the sampling distribution if we choose a sample of size 2. This is the sampling distribution of size 5, of size 10, and of size 30. So this is looking at 30 individuals, finding their average, and plotting it on the histogram and doing it 100 times. We could even look at, this is called a camel distribution, or we've got a bimodal situation. If I were to choose 30 individuals from this population, determine their mean, and plot those points and do it 100 times, I still get a normal distribution where the mean is still the same as the mean of the population, and the standard deviation is smaller than that of the population. So these examples that we've done illustrate the central limit theorem, which basically states that if we are drawing samples from a population, so we're no longer talking about a single individual from a population, if I wanted to find the likelihood of drawing a single woman that had a height over 70 inches, I would have to know that the original population was normally distributed in order to use the normal probability model. To, to find her probability. But if I'm talking about a sample from a population, it doesn't matter if the population is normal or not. If I'm talking about drawing a sample of, say, size 5 or size 30, um, more likely a, a larger sample, because as the sample size increases, the sampling distribution becomes more and more normal. So we can then use a normal distribution um, to find those probabilities of sample means. So we're no longer talking about the distribution of x, we're talking about the distribution of x bar.